Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all this morning in this bright and sunny morning. Makes a bit of a change, but uh, let's hope there's many more to come. And of course, a good morning to all who are listening in or uh, watching on uh, the internet from far distant shores. A very warm welcome to you from St Nicholas Church in Prestwick. We now begin our, our worship. Let's sing to God's praise and glory. And we, our first hymn is Ride On in Majesty. is a gracious God, so let us come before his throne and uh, may we say our prayers of approach, confession. Let us pray. We thank you, all loving God, for this space apart, not just on this Sunday morning, but in the week that is to come, space to become more receptive to the incredible promise of new life. Life to challenge all that is deathly in our world. Life to challenge all that is dull in our hearts. Help us to use this time, not just in prayer, at worship, but in thoughtfulness. In this long Lenten pilgrimage, as we have searched our souls, readying ourselves for the call to follow our crucified and risen Lord, we have had many stumbles and groped along many a wrong turning. We confess the unheeding way we manoeuvre round the wounded on our Jericho roads, playing deaf to the Samaritan woman full of questions, shaking off the Bartimaeuses, plucking our sleeve, dismissing the Zacchaeuses as beneath our notice, hardly break our table conversation as a Mary Magdalene 
offers us riches without price. Help us at this time to face who we are, but also all that we might become. May we go about these coming days listening for your voice in all we do as you challenge the habits that restrict us and the assumptions that close our minds. Help us also to be aware of others who at this time are examining themselves, whether from religious duty or because they have reached a turning point in a career or a relationship or a crisis. Give us an ear that listens, that we may try to find words that, to sustain others and an openness to learn from those we meet. Hear us further as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning, girls and boys. Pardon? Good morning, girls and boys. That's better. That's better. Now, today's a very special Sunday. Does anyone know what Sunday this is? Yes? No, you, I, I can see where you're coming from, but no, you're going to need to wait another week for Easter. <laughs> but we're getting there, don't worry, that's great. Yes? Palm Sunday. That's right, Palm Sunday. So, now, Palm Sunday is a day when we remember how people celebrated when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And that was almost 2,000 years ago, which is a very long time, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine having to wait 2,000 years for our Easter. But we've only got to wait one week, and that's great. So, and you, you may well have heard the story, but let me tell you again. It's good to remind ourselves why we do things in church. So Jesus was walking with his disciples towards Jerusalem. And they came near to the city, and Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead into the town. And they could go much quicker than a whole group of them. And he, he, just before they left, he told them that they would see a young donkey. Sometimes they call it a colt. And it was tied there, and it had never been ridden before because it was so young. And he told them, untie the donkey and bring it to me. And if anyone asks you what you're doing, just tell them, the Lord needs it, and he will send it back to you immediately, once Jesus had finished with it. So the disciples did what Jesus told them to do, and it happened just as he had told them. They found a young donkey, and they took the rope off it and started to lead it away. Now there were some men round about, and uh, they said to the disciples, What are you doing with that? What are you, where are you taking the donkey? They told them what Jesus had said, and the men let them take the donkey. And the disciples brought the young donkey to Jesus, and the disciples put their coats on the donkey. I wonder why they would do that. Why do you think they would put a coat on a donkey? Is it cold? No. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What? Make it comfy. That's right. So it's a nice softer place, because donkeys can be a bit uncomfortable. Um, so, yes, they put their coats on it. That's a, that's a great answer. And they made their way into Jerusalem. Peter went ahead. People went ahead of uh, Jesus and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And others followed behind, and they were also shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna in the highest! All the while, people lined the streets cheering and waving palm branches. And that's sometimes you see... People coming out of some churches and they've got pram crosses made of palm leaves. And they keep those crosses for a year until the beginning of Lent the next year. And then it's burned and they put ashes on their forehead. So sometimes you maybe see someone with an ashes on their forehead 
on Ash Wednesday. So that's what it is. They keep the whole the palm cross for a year and then it's burnt to signify the start of Lent. And so there we are. And it was a wonderful greeting, a wonderful reception, and it was very noisy. Do you think Jesus liked noise? Hmm? Yeah, well, it, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I think he did. Because the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, it's hard to rejoice if you're quiet. Those of you who go to football or support a, another team, or if you're in athletics and you're cheering on someone that's running, you don't go... Come on, come on. You shout out loud and give them cheer and people can hear it and it spurs them on to do better things. So I think Jesus didn't mind noise. But there was also times that he wanted quiet as well. So just as those people celebrated 2,000 years ago, imagine that, 2,000 years, we've come here today to celebrate Jesus. And what better day to do it than on Palm Sunday. Let's have a wee prayer. Father, we celebrate today just as those people celebrated in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to, to sing uh, our hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, and it's number 367, hymn 367. Let us hear the word of God as we find it in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, and we begin at verse 1 to verse 11. As they approached Jerusalem near the towns of Bethpage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. 
Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that's never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you're doing that, say that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street, tied it to the door of a house, and as they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered, just as Jesus had told them, and the crowds let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the field and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David, our father. Praise be to God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. And to all his name be all praise and glory. And now the choir are going to sing the anthem for us, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Thank you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, Jesus is in a parade. He's riding on a borrowed colt. It's a march, a movement, and it's called the Triumphal Entry. People are in front of and behind Jesus. They are shouting their hosannas, they are throwing down palms and their cloaks for him to ride on and also to keep down the dust. They're rolling out the red carpet. There's excitement and anticipation. This Jesus thing is really going somewhere. Something big is happening. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He enters the temple. He looks around at everything. And he leaves. He does nothing. He says nothing. He just leaves. He, he goes to Bethany. In Mark's Gospel, this is the only one that, that says this. And I find it a strange and anticlimactic ending to the triumphal entry. It was a big razzmatazz and then all of a sudden, suddenly nothing happens. It sounds like Jesus is retreating, like getting out of town. So what's that all about? Why did it bother going to all this bother? Did Jesus have somewhere else he needed to be? Perhaps he was scared. Now Holy Week is a scary week. I wonder if he was wavering a bit, not as sure as when he started this ride. Maybe he was having some doubts, some questions, and just wanted to get away for a while. Perhaps he needed to regroup, remuster some questions, and just wanted to get away. Perhaps he needed to make another start. And we've all done that. Haven't you had to face really difficult conversations or situations? They're painful and uncomfortable. Sometimes we make a start but don't finish. We back up and try again. Is this what this leaving the temple is all about? This is such a strange and anticlimactic ending to the triumphal entry that it makes me think there has to be something significant here. And as I said, this is unique. Mark is the only one of the four Gospels to describe this. In Matthew, the whole city is in turmoil when Jesus enters. He go, of course, there's the triumphal entry. And then but when he gets there, he goes to the temple and he drives out those who are buying and selling. He overturns tables and chairs. In Luke, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, then enters the temple where he drives out those who were buying and selling. And in John's account, Jesus does not even go to the temple. Instead, he enters the city and begins teaching. So Mark is the, is the only gospel that says Jesus entered the temple, looked around and left. So why did Jesus leave the temple and go to Bethany? Well, the gospel gives us an answer. It says, Jesus left the temple as it was already late. So that got me wondering, what if this is about something more than just the time of day? What if Jesus is late getting somewhere or doing something? What could he be late for? Well, perhaps Jesus was late getting the colt back to its owner. It's a strange thing to mention, perhaps, but it is a unique aspect, another unique aspect about Mark's account of the triumphal entry. He's the only one to say that Jesus promised to return the colt to its owner. They all agree, all the gospel accounts agree that the colt was either borrowed from its owner uh, or, or found, as, as John says. But only Mark speaks about Jesus returning the colt. And as we heard, he sent two disciples to borrow this young donkey and told them if anyone asks why they were taking the colt, then just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back at once. 
And that is what they did. So what if that's why Jesus left the temple? Maybe he left so he could keep his promise and follow through on what he said he would do. Maybe this is about Jesus being true to himself and keeping his word. What if this is about Jesus staying centered within himself despite what the weak holds for him? Now Jesus had a, more than a good idea of what was coming. And I'm sure there's a whole lot of other things that he could be doing, but you know, he thought he kept his word. He paid attention to the detail. And what if returning the colt is a metaphor for us as we enter into and walk through this Holy Week? What might returning the colt mean for us throughout this week? It's something to think about, ponder. And in doing so, it raises a couple of questions. And the first one that we need to ask ourselves is, what do do we need to return this week? What do we need to release or let go of? We all have stuff that we've carried around with us for far too long. When I say stuff, I'm not really talking about what's lurking in our pockets, or cupboards, or loft. Rather, the emotional baggage. Now, this is no longer able to take us anywhere or give us life. It's just baggage, and we carry that continues to weigh us down. It impoverishes our life. It can corrupt our hearts. So what do we need to let go of, release and return this week? Is it a grudge or a resentment? Anger, fear, disappointment and regret? Guilt, envy? Maybe you need to return being in control. Having to be right a need for approval, perfectionism. I don't know what it is for you, but I'm convinced that we all have our stuff. And maybe Holy Week is the time to return and release it all to God, trusting that God can do something with this stuff when we were never able to. And what if returning and releasing all this is also about returning to ourselves? What if it's about returning to our our centre? I'm not talking about being self-centred. What if it's about reclaiming our truest self? That means we could then move forward, not from the same old place, but from the newly recovered, centred place. And that's what Jesus did. He stayed true to himself throughout this week. And so must we follow his example. So maybe returning the cult is ultimately about returning to our original self. That self of beauty and goodness that God created in and has loved from the beginning. The self that God can see, we can't. The person that God wants us to be, even though we're not quite that person yet. And what if those are the two movements throughout this week? Returning, releasing, and letting go. And returning to and reclaiming those parts of ourselves that have been lost, ignored, forgotten, or denied. Even as we carry around all that unwanted baggage that needs to be returned, so also there are parts of ourselves and our life to which we need to return. So what if this week we returned to ourselves? And here's another question. What do we need to return to? What if we returned to joy, hope, beauty, truth, and honesty? What if we came back to justice, mercy, and forgiveness? What if we reclaimed the dignity and holiness of each human life? What if if we recenter ourselves in peace, and courage? What if we returned to love of neighbour, self and enemy? Remember, love your neighbour as you love yourself. We've got to love ourselves just as much as we need to love others. Coming back to ourselves would be like a new life, wouldn't it? 
So, we begin this week by returning the cold. What do you need to return? And to what do you need to return? These are two questions. And to answer them, we have to look around at everything. That's what Jesus did. It's not so much looking around at everything outside us, but looking at everything inside us, within us. Look what's there. Look at what's missing. Look at what you need, what you feel, who you truly are, and who you want to be, and then return the colt. Take that image of returning the colt with you this week. Take it wherever you go. It's an image of completing a task begun. It's an image of keeping your word or attending to your obligations. Bring it to whatever you do. Hold it as you sing, worship and pray this week. Let it be present as you live your life and as you engage people in relationships, whether your family, work, school, at the shops. Returning the cold is how Holy Week begins. Returning to God and ourselves is the promise of how this week will end. Look around at everything and then go return the cult. Amen. Thanks be to God for his holy word. <coughs> and now our next hymn is um, 520, Ye Who Did Ye who the name of Jesus bear. Being the beginning of Holy Week, which is one of the busiest times for churches in the year, there are a number of intimations I'd like to bring to your attention. First one is a very sad duty. Um, Fiona McKellar died while abroad, and quite suddenly and unexpectedly, and our thoughts are with family and friends. The Back of Five O'Clock Club is from 5.30 to 6.30, uh, and that's uh, today. The Holy Week services will be held here in St. Nicholas Church on each evening from Monday the 25th 
to Friday the 29th, starting at 7.30pm. And Holy Communion will be celebrated on Thursday the 28th. And there will be an offering each evening for Ayrshire Cancer Support. Tea and coffee will be available after each service. On Good Friday, the church will be open from 10am until 12.30pm. And Reverend Fraser will give readings and prayers between 11 o'clock and 12 noon. Presbyterian Council of Churches invite you to its annual gala event. That's next Saturday, that's Saturday the 30th in Boydfield Gardens between 2 and 4 p.m. Next Sunday, that's Easter Day, the school Easter, our own Sunday school Easter egg competition will be held. And uh, you can see there is the following categories and um, prizes for the best egg in each category. And there is an open category for the young at heart. Yeah. Okay. Tea and coffee will be served uh, in the Kirk Cafe after today's service. And they are looking for volunteers. And I bring notice to, this notice to you, asking for volunteers uh, for the Kirk Cafe on the 7th uh, of April and the 21st of April. So Louise, has, at the moment, has no volunteers for these two Sundays, Sunday the 7th and the 21st. So if you can help, please let Louise know as soon as you can. And now we will uplift our offering. Let us pray. Lord of all, as we make our offering today, we do not just bring you our money, we bring ourselves. We bring our fellowship, we bring your church everywhere, praying that you will use all we do, all we say, and all that we are for the growth of your kingdom and the fulfillment of your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us continue to our, in prayer with our Lord, with thanksgiving and intercession. O God, who sings through your creation in the melody of its waters and the wind in the trees, in the lilt of the songbird and the animal's call, we give you thanks for the singers and musicians of old whose songs today we have heard and sung. Loving and Holy Spirit of God, hear our prayers. We believe that you want us not just to serve, but to pray for the world to whose service you have called us in all its longing for peace, for justice, for reconciliation. Hear our prayers today for those who struggle against tyrannies, those damaged by natural disasters or blight caused by others' greed, those forced out from their communities to seek refuge elsewhere, for aid agencies, peacekeeping forces, rescue services at sea and air and land, world organisations and alliances, national governments and those offering a welcome to asylum seekers in our towns. If statistics are tears, the world weeps for the release of, for so many. We pray for the depressed, the falsely imprisoned, the undervalued, the cruelly undernourished, the exploited and the sick, the deeply anxious who have everything and yet nothing, miserable in their comfort, longing for love to feel value. May they and we travel with you to Easter. We pray for those in the royal family who, like so many up and down this country, are undergoing treatment for cancer. Bless them and all others and their families who are being impacted by this terrible disease. With these petitions, we give thanks for saints and martyrs throughout the centuries and the many people forgotten by us but known to you who have challenged injustice and discrimination, given voice to those unnoticed and unheard, and helped create communities where all are valued. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 458. Hymn 458, At the Name of Jesus, Every Knee Shall Bow.
the peace of God which is beyond all understanding. Guard your thoughts and your hearts in Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon and abide with each one of you now and forevermore.